Hello everyone. So I've been scaling for a long time and something I've made clear from day one is that I want to be as accurate and consistent as possible, of course. I want that triple AP scaling and to that end, I've gone through great lengths to make sure and apply these standards to everything I do. Another thing you may know about me if you follow this channel is that I truly want a good discourse over scaling and actively discourage an echo chamber. If I'm going to be right, I want to be right because the facts and logic follow what I'm saying, not because any given amount of people listen to me and so we all just agree regardless of facts or logic. I say this because I recently had a great back and forth discussing scaling within Naruto with someone who started in the channel comments and as you'll see later turned into pages and pages on Google Docs. The exact opposite experience with the terrible debate I had not too long ago. It was a great good faith back and forth, and so I wanted to share it with all of you. So with that said, let's jump in and see what a healthy discussion actually looks like. To start, I'll need to outline this video. There are 10 main topics that we're uh, going to be going through. You'll be hearing an outline of what their, uh, the other person's positions were and why, and I'll be responding so you will 100% be hearing my point of view and reasoning far more than their side. Uh, I want that point there, uh, that you'll be hearing my side more, to be very upfront because we're talking about a back and forth that spanned many multiple Google Doc pages. And I don't have all the time to cover every detail. That said, it's my point of view that is reflected in the channel, uh, that covers the scaling we see with each video, and so with the limited time, yes, I will have that view, my view, be the majority focus. But... The link to the Google Doc will be down below, and I actively would want anyone who agrees with my view or disagrees with theirs uh, and has the time to please view the doc so you can see the full thing, like see their actual full uh, back and forth that they had, their full reasonings and everything. Uh, though I will absolutely be trying my best, and I do believe I'm succeeding here in capturing their main points and addressing them. Um, so yeah, I would want you, however, to uh, also catch on your own every single detail if you have the time um, and you happen to agree with everything I'm saying or something. So that said, let's start with the first of the 10 topics. That would be losing part of what allows you to fight at 100% and the level of effect it would have on you. This topic began with the idea of Itachi and his scaling. Uh, while alive, he clearly was losing eyesight and the point initially made was that this would slow Itachi down. Now, I disagreed in that even a blind boxer would still have the same movement speed, same striking speed, etc. Uh, they just wouldn't have the precision to not stumble over themselves or perhaps the confidence to run without falling, but that's separate from speed. Precision is not speed. Uh, however, uh, they did agree with that. It's okay, I was talking that, that kind of the way I initially said. Uh, was precision, and they reformed their argument to better align with what they were trying to get across. And their reformed argument comes down to this. Uh, they go on to say, I believe that a person cannot fully exert themselves without a certain degree of precision and expect to succeed at their task. Sure, a boxer could throw four plus punches per second, blindfolded or not, but how would that apply to a fight? Let's say the window of opportunity, a time frame when a boxer feels confident enough to attack his opponent, occurs on average every three seconds during a match. The boxer calculates this window by reading their opponent's movement. So with that in mind, how often do you think this window occurs if the boxer puts on a blindfold? Well, honestly, the answer might just be zero because we've taken away their only ability of reading, but for the sake of the argument, let's say they possess some heightened senses like hearing or touch. So the boxer can somewhat anticipate their opponent's actions by feeling vibrations across the floor mat or listening to the rate of breathing, etc. Do you think the average rate at which the window of opportunity occurs is going to remain the same? And so that kind of summarizes like what they were trying to hint at. And um, yeah, I have to ultimately agree with the reframing of it. Now I'm not starting with me agreeing just because that makes it easier and then going into, the, don't be looking for a pattern here. Uh, this is literally just the first point that we started talking about. Um, but that said, I with this point here, I do ultimately agree with that reframing. Because we'd agree then that Itachi wouldn't be slower in any given instance, but would absolutely be slower in the means of a 
fight, which is multiple instances, a flow of time, uh, an ongoing event that requires speed over time due to such things as windows of opportunity and such. In this way, the speed at which Itachi can flow within a fight, link move to move, or even anticipate and act accordingly, he would in fact link overall to a slowdown, but not so in any given single instance. Uh, so I know he also later brings up Madara fighting blind as well, and that we don't know if Itachi could do the same to that degree, or to what degree at all. But personally, without proof uh, that he's capable of such, we can only take the baseline that he'd in fact be affected. Um, so to what degree Itachi was affected while alive, however, we don't know. So what does this mean? I agree with him. What does this mean? Um, it means any higher scaling we'd get for KCM1 Naruto doesn't invalidate Edo Itachi's showings because Edo Itachi showing to do better in a fight requiring more speed isn't, um, it actually would make more sense in a logic, like it's just true that a flow of a fight would overall cause a slowdown. So Itachi versus Sasuke would throughout the fight have been a slower Itachi than what Edo Itachi could show. So him showing what he did against Casey and Naruto. Um, it's not invalidating it to the level that I was taking it. Um, and yeah, I'd say it instead serves to suggest a new level for Edo Itachi by that unknown degree, that difference of uh, what he was losing versus Sasuke uh, with his eyes getting worse. Um, so at the gate, yes, I've changed my mind on a surface level where my thoughts on speed remain unchanged, but in how Itachi scales through an entire fight and the speed shown um, through the whole fight, that has changed. All right. The next topic was about dojutsu adding stats, and does a degrading of dojutsu degrade your stats? Uh, while specifically that the dojutsu is still at the level that it was. Um, what I mean as an example is, okay, I've awakened Mangekyo Sharingan. My Mangekyo Sharingan is now starting to go blind, but it's still a Mangekyo Sharingan. It's not degrading down to a base Sharingan. It is still at the level of Mangekyo Sharingan, but my eyesight is getting worse. So the, in a way, it's like, is your dojutsu really getting worse, or is it your eye, or is it because the dojutsu is a part of your eye? Um, so that's kind of the question. Your dojutsu goes up, your stats go up. Your dojutsu slash your eye is degrading. Does it mean that your stats are degrading with it? All right, I know I repeated myself, but let's continue. So this idea, again, obviously comes through the fact we directly see an increase in a character's dojutsu leading to that increase in stats. So yeah, logically it would make sense that this is uh, their position. And so do I agree with them? Um, I don't. Uh, because I don't believe we've been shown this is the case. Uh, not once can I think of a character's dojutsu worsening and their stats, unlike what was talked about prior in like the flow of a fight outside of the stat of, say, reaction speed. Because again, dojutsu is kind of linked specifically with the eyes, which is separate. Like just being able to see isn't a power of the dojutsu, right? Um, so them going blind doesn't have to have a direct link with dojutsu either. But anyways, not once can I think of their stats actually lowering. Um, examples that I was given was of characters becoming stronger as their dojutsu increased, but zero examples were given of stats lowering as their dojutsu worsened, but remained at the level it had already achieved. Um, however, if this feels off to you, what I'm saying, like, why do I disagree? Like, okay, they don't have the feats, um, but it feels off that me taking it as a no with no proof for my side either, because um, I, I don't have, there's nothing that shows, you know, that it doesn't decrease stats. Um, let me repeat my answer on the doc. It's a short one. This point really comes down to an extreme lack of evidence on either side. Uh, whether it does or doesn't, in fact, lower stats while in the middle of deteriorating. And this is stats as in not just raw speed, even in an instant, but even strength and durability and such, as I'm understanding this as all of this shows to go up with higher dojutsu. So with a claim of deteriorating dojutsu, but still at X level, uh, regardless causing a lowering of stats, it's hard for me to agree with no evidence. That said, I absolutely realize I take it not lowering the stats purely for minimum's purpose and is equally as unknown. By taking it as not 
lowering stats while in the deteriorating but still on X level, we know they are at least X level, and that's all I can go off of at this time. So that was my uh, statement back. And so, look, ultimately, make no mistake, this is a means by which to continue with necessary minimums so as to accomplish triple AP scaling. I will not be claiming that a deterioration of their dojutsu or their eye um, that is still at an achieved level doesn't result in a decrease of stats. It might, but I wouldn't say it does result in it either, right? Um, and so I will be treating it as if it doesn't because that will be giving us necessary minimums. And for no other reason am I doing such, you know? That's the only reason. It's just for necessary minimums. Um, and so that ultimately goes uh, in, in terms of where we are now. I've agreed with the first thing. I've disagreed with this now. Um, what this means, especially when it comes to Itachi scaling, um, is that in the future or other feats that I'm seeing, we will definitely be looking for the minimum of minimum scaling because this dojutsu side is not an extra factor um, where his stats are decreased on top of the flow of you know the, the speed of a fight or something. All right, so that's the second topic. And so then we go on to the third topic. And just as a heads up, it's a long one, but it's a very important one. And so to start with that, the third topic was if chakra is the means by which characters' base stats are increased and not just techniques, as in their base stats of them just existing, um, so does that increase uh, because of uh, chakra and their, uh, specifically, sorry, their chakra manipulation or their chakra control so that's what it is i'm sorry uh, does that increase a character's base stats so yes uh, this one became one of the most important disagreements surrounding the scaling within the series uh, does a character's level of chakra control increase their base stats with no technique being used speed strength reactions durability etc uh, his view is that chakra control or manipulation goes into techniques yes but also fundamentally is how characters in Naruto would have stronger, faster, and otherwise bodies than others. Uh, why say base Madara would be faster than A without using techniques? As an example he gives, you know, like A needs to use his um, lightning chakra boost and still be slower than Madara not using anything. So that's an example he's giving. Uh, another point he brings up is that chakra is the energy source by which characters pull from to do their superhuman things. He goes on to ask this specific question. Uh, do you think that Shinobi only achieve their inhuman levels of AP, durability, and speed when they use specific techniques? And then follows by saying, if your answer is yes, then I see some major implications with this logic. So Naruto characters don't just use chakra to cast various techniques and such, they use it to enhance every muscle fiber and cell of their body. Figure of speech, he says. Uh, they do the same for weapons, too. That's why a sword used by end of series Sasuke is so much more powerful than, say, Zabuza in the Land of Waves. A sword is only as strong as the user. This is also one of the most common themes among fiction, albeit different power systems. Take Goku, for instance. When he's not utilizing key control, he can get scratched by bullets or pierced by lasers from a character much, much weaker than him. This is not because he wasn't powering up into a form like Super Saiyan, it's because he wasn't infusing his body with ki. Uh, this is why characters getting attacked off guard is often fatal. In Naruto's case, it would mean that said character was not reinforcing their body by controlling chakra as it requires an activation. Uh, now, if you consider the basic body enhancement, as I call it, to be a technique, then that's fine. I can agree with you on that, but it seems like you are suggesting that only named techniques are applicable here. Important to note, I'm not suggesting the chakra spread is evenly distributed or is literally used for every single cell. The point is that chakra is the only means a shinobi really has for making their body stronger. Otherwise, they are basically in the same tier as a background villager. So, I've hope, I, I hope I'm really capturing exactly what he's saying, why he's arguing it, and it, because there's more. There is more to even just what he said here. Uh, but again, time. <laughs> this is going to be a longer video already. Anyways. So with that said, again, I ask uh, that you, because of that, look at the Google Doc below to see his full side in depth. Uh, but on screen, you can see one of the main contentions being argued, so I'll address this because this point, again, is very important. Ultimately, did his view change my mind here? After a lot of thought, I gave it a lot of thought, I still disagree. I'll read off my response 
and again, warning, it's long, but it's hitting home on a vital part of the scaling of this whole series, as if his view is true, if it's the true one, then that would change a lot of scaling, especially so for all future scaling coming up. Um, but let's see, uh, let's see what you think after my response and see if I'm being unfair or otherwise. Obviously, I don't think I'm being, but let's continue. So my response. To address the specifics, I was asked, do you think that Shinobi only achieved these inhuman levels of AP durability stats, basically, when using specific techniques? Uh, my answer is no. I don't believe that. I believe that they achieved their base inhuman levels of stats via basic fictional bodies, being made to be however strong that they are, and that they amp their stats even more above their already above basic human levels uh, via the techniques. Um, and I don't feel this contradicts anything I've ever said earlier. Um, so this point came about in the idea of sick Itachi has worse chakra manipulation than Edo Itachi. Um, chakra manipul or control, if that's a word, you know, he, he definitely had uh, less control uh, as Edo Itachi would have had uh, all the chakra at his uh, disposal and the sickness wouldn't be getting in on him, uh, like attacking him basically literally in the middle of like ending his life. So it's quite obvious uh, Edo Itachi would have superior chakra manipulation and control, um, which goes into manipulating it. Um, anyway, so yes, and then furthermore, chakra manipulation is used to affect your stats. Ergo, Edo Itachi can affect his stats via superior chakra manipulation to superior stats. Now, my point is about base Sik Itachi versus base Edo Itachi, and that the chakra manipulation would only apply to the techniques, such as if both had access to A's lightning shield for speed or his lightning aura. I do think that Edo Itachi would have the superior lightning aura if they both had that technique, but Edo Itachi didn't use a technique like that. Neither did Sik Itachi. And so base Sik Itachi shouldn't be as far behind or have this apply in the way that he's applying it to uh, Edo Itachi in, when comparing the two. So that said, um, I am saying like, what's consistent in my stance, again, is the bases of the two, okay? I believe Itachi's base is in human levels without techniques. And I don't believe this is shown to be because of chakra manipulation being applied throughout the entire body with no techniques and just as a basic function of combat. So the question becomes, is it fair to say the basic energy source of Naruto wouldn't apply this way when so many other series do apply it this way? And it's pretty standard. So like chakra, you know? Uh, to me, I'd obviously say it is fair to say that I want to see the proof of this in Naruto, or I wouldn't be saying this, of course. But then why do I think it's fair when it's decently standard for other series? The answer is because it's also pretty darn standard for the opposite. Uh, if I think of Luffy, uh, his body is far beyond human standards, and that was before, say, hockey. Or you might think of the devil fruit. Okay, it was, it was above basic human levels before the Devil Fruit. But even more than that, how about Zoro then for One Piece? He was also, of course, way, way above human levels of stats before hockey. And he doesn't even have a fruit, okay? Um, now, we can look at Rurouni Kenshin for something close to human level that is yet still far above human level with no auras or nin or something where with techniques which was huge, you know, for characters in the series. They jump massively in AP or speed or what have you. There's tons of examples of it being the case and not being the case from series to series where, you know, everything comes down to a certain, like, you, in Yu Hakusho, like, spirit energy. If Yusuke has less spirit energy than Taguro, he is not hitting harder than Taguro. He hits harder than Taguro, despite Taguro being made for muscle and mass because Yusuke, um eclipsed him in spirit energy. That is an example where it's like tied. That's kind of what he's saying with Chakra. But that's not the case for every series. So, you know, Roni, Roni Kenshin, uh, One Piece, off the bat, and I'll give more examples. You can be strong just because you're a fictional body. Um, shoot, what, Saitama, <laughs> right off the top of my head, too. Um, 
right, where it's not a tied in energy source for the series. Um, even if there is a tied in energy source for the series, like hockey for One Piece, again, it, these are a bunch of examples. So, anyways, okay, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. So, then I thought. Let's say it is true that chakra manipulation does equal higher stats for characters to some degree, an unknown degree. Now, it's true we don't know what degree it increased stats, but if you consider not just Edo Itachi as above Sick Itachi, but you consider Edo Stage 1 Kimimaro as above Stage 2 Sick Kimimaro, then I'd expect to see something within the realm of characters having way higher chakra control to wipe the floor with other characters' stats that aren't close in terms of said chakra control. So, if, again, if Kimimaru Stage 1 is now stronger than Stage 2 Kimimaru, which we know is a huge increase, um, then chakra control should be affecting stats by at least that degree, right? That, that's a pretty big degree. We, we should be seeing, we should be expecting to see characters um, that suggest as much. Okay, so as I thought about it, consider what made the Rasengan so hard to use. It's a technique with no element added. It was purely chakra amount plus chakra manipulation, with, you know, with the spinning, with obviously the chakra manipulation being what made it both so hard to master as well as so deadly. Naruto learned and mastered this ability. But instead of seeing his base stats and everything he does go way up compared to at least those who were around his level and hadn't shown chakra control to his level, because let's not make a mistake here, to have mastered the Rasengan showed that Naruto was getting insane, uh, you know, insanely adept at chakra control, chakra manipulation to have done this, okay? Uh... We saw that he still wasn't the fastest. Even him compared to himself when he was starting the Rasengan to like him like mastering it. It wasn't like the as he was learning to do it and getting better at manipulating chakra that his stats were rising by you know stage one Kimimaro to stage two Kimimaro. That that wasn't the case at all. Um, so not only was he even compared to not just himself but to others, not only was he not the fastest, he wasn't the strongest either. And again, I'm talking about base values. No techniques, no forms, just as it'd be applied to Itachi here, who used no techniques or any forms that amped his stats. Um, when I think of Haku, I'd imagine they'd have superior chakra manipulation over Lee by a long shot, and yet in base with no techniques. I can't imagine Haku outmuscling Lee by much, if any, at all. Uh, I would say Haku probably has better chakra manipulation uh, then Zabuza. Zabuza comes off way stronger than Haku. And, you know, this thought is also, understandably, troublesome. As we don't have some chakra manipulation scouters where we, the viewers, can see who is at X level of skilled at chakra manipulation. You know, specifically, whoa, he's this level of chakra manipulation. It can always be argued one way or another, so I understand that. But, I mean, just think of all the examples. I think of Shikamaru versus Choji, and I'd consider Shikamaru to have way better chakra manipulation than Choji. Choji is still superior in strength and durability by a long shot. I, th and I mean, in base even. Um, I think that, I guess maybe not a long shot for Choji, but I don't know. I mean, uh, especially strength. I'll stop with strength then, by, for sure, even in base. Uh, I think this would apply to Jirobo. Uh, I think this would apply up to Madara. Uh, Madara had insane chakra manipulation compared to everyone around him at the time. But then, were his stats that much higher than others? Base? Was his base strength even higher than, say, Tsunade's base strength or A's base strength? Uh, Gara showed amazing chakra manipulation. That's like his whole shtick by the war arc because it wasn't even just, you know... Um, Shukaku at that point. This is all him with that sand. Was he the fastest? Was he the strongest? Pain has amazing chakra manipulation. He certainly wasn't the strongest or fastest. And I mean even as the Nagato body. Yeah, I know with his legs. But like even as the Nagato body, he had insane chakra manipulation. He was not the strongest. He was not the fastest. We're talking about stats here, right? Base stats. Because if you're just saying like with techniques, then you're just agreeing with me. I think that Itachi, Edo Itachi, with a technique for speed, would do better than a live Itachi with a technique for speed. But that's not what's being argued here. The idea is that 
sick Itachi in stats in general, just his base existence, was on a lower level than Edo Itachi. Uh, so that's the argument, and that's what I disagree with. So I hope all these examples are really coming at it, because I have more examples, uh, and I really want this to be um, thought about. You know, I want people to be like, you're missing something here, But I, if I am, of course. Um, but I'll continue here. Um, so yeah. Going on and on, you know, ultimately, yeah, I believe characters are at their X level of base stats and that their bodies have been honed into regardless of what level their chakra manipulation ability is. And that chakra manipulation within the technique they employ add to their already base superhuman stats. Uh, when I think of basic human enhancement as was laid out, you know, from them to me, uh, I think of Tsunade applying chakra to her fist for huge hits like was taught to Sakura. That's why they hit so hard with their fists. It is from them uh, manipulating chakra to their fists. Uh, something that is deliberate, you know, that when I'm talking about like her moving the chakra to her fists and getting that superhuman strength from her punches, that is something that is deliberate, learned over time, and even like explained. They go into detail about it. It's not something that simply is existing within their bodies as a stat enhancer. Um, now, I go on and... Uh, <laughs> give more examples, and I'm going to read them out because I think this is very important. Um, so other examples. Sakura should have gone up a ton in stats overall as she learned medical jutsu with not only being good with chakra in general, but then in learning to hone it further. Uh, but her base stats were not skyrocketing. Again, we'd expect something on the, the levels of like stage one Kimimaru being stronger than his previous stage two full power self uh, because of this, you know. Uh, so, besides Sakura, Neji and Hinata should have been among the fastest and strongest and most durable, all stats, among fighters. Um, and, yeah, you might think, okay, well, Neji was pretty darn fast and strong. Well, Hinata would be up there, too, and she clearly wasn't. Uh, Lee should have been among the slowest, weakest, and least durable of the characters. Uh, these, again, ought be true if the base stats rise based on greater chakra manipulation to the degree being argued for Itachi or especially Kimimaro. But let's leave Naruto, okay? I already went like Saitama, One Piece, and things. Doctor Strange from comics, right? Doctor Strange or Raven uh, would be like Naruto, in my opinion, as a character who has an energy source they can pull from that is separate from their base stats. Uh, so stats directly correlating to energy source... It's definitely common, but it's common the other way as well. If it could go either way, what would we expect to see if the correlation between base stats and the, and the energy source is true? Again, I'm going to go back to Yu Hakusho. If you're going to say the energy source is directly correlated to base stats, Yu Hakusho is the way. It's one of the ones that are directly correlated in that way. Yusuke is as strong and fast in other stats be, that he is because of his rise in spirit energy. Take his spirit energy away, and he's directly weaker. Uh, Feats back this to the point, again, with, you know, comparing him to Taguro, who is certainly stronger than Yusuke, until Yusuke's spirit energy rises to a point where he outright blitzes, because he gains speed, and beats Taguro into the ground, because he gains strength, where he couldn't previous. And Yusuke is not muscles like you know, Taguro. Taguro was blitzing Yusuke prior, and Taguro is not speed like Hiye, right? It's purely because the stats are directly correlating with uh, their spear energy, right? Uh, this would be a clear indication that a rise in X energy source ties to base stats. Um, not just his spirit gun, right? Uh, it, it's not like as he gets more chakra control, it only applies to his spirit gun. Take Bleach. Uh, that's another example. We see it clearly there, too, as early as Ichigo hurting himself attacking Kenpachi. And like was brought up, it's common. Yeah, what they said is true. It is common. There are plenty of examples where the spirit energy or the, the energy in general is tied to the base stats. But they all have feats to show it's true. And it's common the other way. Naruto lacks feats to show it's true. And so given there are plenty of examples where characters' base stats just are what they are and then can be added to from there, without feats, Naruto is suggesting to just... he. He's suggesting to where the they have inhuman level bases, but because of any of all of your you know <laughs> general fictional bodies being above base human, and that it is then their techniques that allow them to go above their already inhuman levels. 
that'll wrap up the first three topics. Uh, the third one being, again, quite long, like I had said. And so because of that, I'll be ending the video here as a part one. Part two, I'll be finishing the last seven. Uh, but note, none of them will be nearly as long as this last one here. And so it should be about the same time of a video. So that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, especially comment because, again, I will respond to it. And maybe more good back and forths and debates and topics can be uh, really hashed out. Um, but look forward to part two where we continue because importance in viewing all of this, this video here and part two, is that all of these are points that really matter when it comes to properly scaling and identifying the series as a whole. So, you know, I'm, I've set out and made a whole specific uh, section just for the triple AP scaling of Naruto. And, you know, I've gone from beginning to I'm now working towards the end. I'm about to do the uh, Madara meteor feats and such. And so these new points here, this back and forth I had, all of it matters. All of it is integral into the future of the scaling with the series. So uh, that's why I felt it uh, worth putting out there. Uh, so again, I really can't stress this enough. Hope you enjoyed the video. Can't wait to see everybody at part two. And then finally, finally finish that meteor feat from Madara 2. Uh, see you all then. Ciao.